We want to welcome you to Section 4 of our Jesus in Your Home series, Home Fellowships. In this segment and those that follow, we'll be sharing with you both the nature and the purpose for our Father's children to share true fellowship in each other's homes. You probably weren't aware that fellowshipping in homes as extended spiritual family was already part of the Hebraic stream of Judaism before the coming of Jesus. Today, right before our eyes, our Father is fulfilling His biblical promise to restore the Jewish people to the land of Israel. And at the same time, He's revealing to us Gentiles these Hebraic foundations that were infiltrated and replaced long ago by Greek philosophy and Roman organization. The Hebraic foundations our Father is restoring emphasize the call for relational love for Him a love that's fleshed out by the trust-filled obedience Abraham demonstrated. Love-grounded, obedient trust means that you choose each day to live righteously in a way that reflects His kingdom. It's important for your own pilgrimage to salvation that you and your family prayerfully seek our Father for His confirmation that the truths we're sharing are His. And if you're viewing these video segments, hoping to learn how to start a home fellowship, we will be showing you how, but perhaps not in the way you think. We're not interested in conveying techniques. Instead, we want to help you acquire the same foundational goals and motivations as the earliest followers of Jesus. We'll be sharing how the Abrahamic Covenant is the bedrock for understanding Hebraic home fellowships. You'll also learn about biblical authority and how it is enacted in home fellowships. You'll discover how to make decisions that align with God's will. You'll find out how to produce spiritual maturity in the new followers of Jesus who are part of your extended spiritual family. And we'll be sharing very important kingdom principles to guide you into a life that pleases our Father. Each of the elements we'll discuss will help to strengthen and encourage you on your pilgrimage to your salvation. The reasons why the earliest followers of Jesus were spiritually powerful and relationally intimate are crucial for you to impress in your heart. You don't need techniques that tell you what to do, far from it. But you do need the same goals and heart motivations that the earliest followers of Jesus pursued. And this is what we hope to help you live by. As you'll come to realize, our Heavenly Father began laying the foundations for fellowship that centered around the home way back with the patriarch Abraham. The relational priorities of the Restoration Diagram show that fellowship in home grows out from what's taking place in your home. A home fellowship truly is a fellowship of homes as extended spiritual family. And for your family of home fellowships to thrive on fruitful kingdom principles, you need to first be living for King Jesus in your own home. Before we share more about home fellowships and their purposes, we want to emphasize our Lord's way of aligning your lifestyle to His kingdom ways. That alignment comes when those who are pressing on together in establishing Hebraic faith practices thoroughly discuss these truths together. As you talk honestly and openly together, our Lord Jesus will be enacting a specific promise. I tell you the truth, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. That if two of you on earth agree about anything you ask for, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three have gathered together in my name, there I am in their midst. Matthew chapter 18, verses 18 through 20. Through discussion together, you're seeking the presence of our Lord Jesus to bring you the light of His perspective. 
and his presence as the head of his called out ones, his church, is more crucial than anyone or anything else. As you discuss biblical truths for the sake of applying them, his presence brings clarity and focus for you. It's appropriate at this point that we offer you a warning. Plenty of cell group and house church techniques are being peddled today. They present a step-by-step -step systematic approach to doing home church. We realize that having a prepared plan which someone else has developed makes people feel secure, especially you men. And techniques help the men who lead these groups feel as though they're being successful in their duty. But keep in mind that what pleases men's ego doesn't always delight God, nor does it fulfill his purpose. There is a way that seems right to a man, but in the end it leads to death. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 25. We know from our years of experience in sharing the Hebraic foundations that few of you are in the habit of discussing biblical truths with the intent of applying them. And there probably hasn't been much in your spiritual training that's emphasized discussion with the realization that Jesus is in your midst. To use a common expression, you need a paradigm shift. Your absolute reliance on the guidance and power of Jesus is critical if you're going to experience the relational intimacy and spiritual power of your forefathers in the faith. As we shared in section 3 on the home, your biblical applications are called halakhas. Halakhas are your privilege and responsibility to prayerfully put scriptural truth into practice in your life. This life application of God's Word is the authority Jesus gives His followers in Matthew chapter 16 verse 19 and chapter 18 verses 18 through 20. So there's no misunderstanding. Let's examine two key biblical terms. A halakha is a kingdom principle you've prayerfully established from God's Word that has become part of your character and your way of life. A halakha is an enduring life principle that becomes part of your character. A rhema is a personal revelation from the Spirit of God that either imparts a truth to you or commands you to do a specific task. A rhema is an immediate and specific insight of understanding or guidance from the Spirit. If you spent much time in religious systems, then you're going to have to mature in personal responsibility to establish your own life principles that guide your faith walk. In essence, Jesus makes you responsible for the doctrine you'll live by in His Spirit. You take ownership of your life principles by establishing your halakhas through discussion. And our Lord calls for you to pursue in obedience to His Spirit, His rhema, to give you immediate and specific guidance along your life journey. All too often, clergy have robbed followers of Jesus of their authority to establish halakhas for themselves and their families. If you've already been establishing Hebraic foundations in your home, then you've come to understand the ways in which the clergy system dominates organized religion. This system of clergy control has hindered individual followers of Jesus by keeping them in spiritual infancy, telling people what they must believe. This Nicolaitan system causes clergy to place themselves between God and His people. The individual is blinded to his need to search the scriptures for himself, to depend on hearing from the Spirit of Christ, and to practice obediently walking in His power in His way. But now you're out of the established religious system. You have no excuse for spiritual laziness. Picture the transformational changes that take place when you discuss insights and life decisions with your family or extended spiritual family. If you've embraced our Father's covenant in Jesus, then He has sealed you with His Holy Spirit. And because you're using discussion to seek the presence and mind of Christ, He's in your midst as well. His presence 
and the Spirit of our Father in each of you will guide you in ways you can't anticipate. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. John chapter 3, verse 8. Can you grasp how exciting and joyful it is for Jesus to be invited into your midst? For Him to personally guide you as you discuss His ways together? And to know that His Spirit in you will empower you to apply His Word to every circumstance in your life so that your life will glorify our Father. We shared in our segments on the home how important it is that you seek Rhema for your family, God's specific will and guidance. It's humbling for you to depend on God's specific word for your life, and He wants it that way, to keep you humble and lovingly dependent on Him. That's the intimacy of kingdom living. You need the presence of Jesus and a humble dependence on the Holy Spirit in your home. And that same need is critical in your fellowship together with your extended spiritual family. Keep in mind that if you don't depend on the indwelling Holy Spirit in your own home, you won't rely on Him as a fellowship of homes either. You'll stay horizontal, looking for man's techniques to guide your way. And man's ways are spiritual dead ends. Each follower of Jesus is very different from any other. Our background, maturity, gifting, even our gender, make each of us unique in our perspective. This is why you need each person's input in your discussion. And no one knows what the outcome will be as each person takes part if you discuss with humble hearts that are open to the Spirit's guidance. Remember, the enemy of God is ready to oppose you any way he can. He certainly doesn't want to see the kingdom of God advancing by the way you and your family and Jesus spur each other on. Since the demons don't know what your application of God's word will be, your mutual discussion makes it difficult for them to get ahead of you to ambush you. The more the Hebraic foundations become a way of life for you as extended spiritual family, the more you'll understand what our Lord means by His kingdom. Your chief goal must be to love, honor, and glorify the King. He is the preeminent head of His called out ones, and He is our reason for gathering in His name. Jesus is also head of the body, the ecclesia, the called out ones, and He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that He Himself might come to have first place in everything. Colossians chapter 1, verse 18. You'll come to understand in the segments to follow that a key criterion for gathering with others in Jesus' name is this. If Jesus doesn't show up in your fellowship gatherings, why should you? You and your fellowship family must ensure that He is present when you get together. You are able to block the presence of Jesus if you deny Him through deliberate, unconfessed sin, through unbelief or distrust, or through coming to unilateral decisions without discussing His will with each other. Relying on the Holy Spirit within each of you identifies you as members of His kingdom. Paul warns with utmost sobriety, if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he does not belong to Christ. Romans chapter 8, verse 9. So as you continue through these segments on fellowship and homes as extended spiritual family, seek wholeheartedly for Jesus to be in your midst. And rely on the Spirit of Christ in you to confirm how he wants you to collectively restore these life-changing Hebraic foundations to your own fellowship family.